Hi, it's Panda Movies here. Today, I'm going to explain the movie called 1917. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. The movie is based on a true-to-life story that unfolded during the First World War. On the sixth day of April in 1917, aerial reconnaissance observed that the German army, which had pulled back from a sector of the Western Front in northern France, is not in retreat, but has made a strategic withdrawal to the new Hindenburg Line, where they are waiting to overwhelm the British with artillery. Upon learning of the enemy's new strategy that if successful could take a toll on their defenses, the British immediately took action. With telephone lines cut, two young Lance Corporals, William Schofield, a veteran of the Somme, and Tom Block, are tasked by General Aaronmore to carry a message to Colonel Mackenzie of the 2nd Battalion of the Devonshire Regiment to call off the scheduled attack to be held the next morning that would jeopardize the lives of 1,600 men, including Blake's brother Joseph, a lieutenant. Schofield and Blake immediately set off on their mission, crossing no man's land to reach the abandoned German trenches, but not without Schofield injuring his hand along the way. The pair find themselves in an underground barracks, they discover a tripwire set by the Germans, which is promptly triggered by a rat. The explosion almost kills Schofield, but Blake saves him, and the two barely manage to escape. The end of the tunnel had led them to an abandoned farmhouse, where they encountered a German plane that was shot down by an Allied aircraft in a dogfight. The pair attempt to save the pilot from his burning aircraft, Blake persuading Schofield to get water for the pilot, but the enemy stabs Blake as soon as Schofield turns his back. In anguish, Schofield shoots the pilot dead and comforts Blake as he dies, promising to complete the mission and to write to Blake's mother. Taking Blake's rings and dog tag, as well as Aaron Moore's letter, he is picked up by a passing British unit, and he carries off with his mission alone. The unit's journey is interrupted by a destroyed canal bridge near Ecus St. Mine prevents the British lorries from crossing, and Schofield chooses to part with them, so he might be able to make it on time. He uses what is left of the bridge to cross alone, and comes under fire from a sniper. He exchanges shots with a sniper and manages to wound him, giving him the chance to advance and hide in an abandoned building. Even when wounded, the sniper still manages to shoot back at Schofield, and their gunfight continues. Finally, Schofield manages to kill the sniper, but ends up being struck in the helmet as well, rendering him unconscious. Later on that night, he awakens and without wasting another minute, makes his way through the flare-lit ruins of the town. After evading a German soldier, he discovers a French woman hiding with an infant. The woman was kind enough to treat his wounds and gave him canned food and milk from the farm. Despite her pleas, Schofield leaves after hearing the chimes of a nearby clock and realizing that time is running out. He encounters some more German soldiers, even managing to strangle one of them to death. He escapes through the river and is swept over a waterfall before finally reaching the riverbank. He makes his way back to the forest where he finds D Company of the 2nd Devons, which is in the last wave of the attack. As the company starts to move toward the front, Schofield tries to reach Colonel Mackenzie. As he was just about to complete his mission, Schofield realizes that the trenches are too crowded for him to reach the colonel in the fastest way possible, so he chooses the quickest yet the most dangerous way of reaching Mackenzie, going over the top of the trenches and sprinting on the open battlefield parallel to the British trench line, just as the infantry begins its charge. With all his might, he forces his way in to meet Mackenzie, who reads the message and reluctantly calls off the attack. Schofield looks for Blake's brother and finds him, who was among the first wave, and is bloodied but unharmed. Schofield informs Joseph of his mission and of Tom's death, passing on Tom's rings and dog tag. Joseph is deeply upset about his brother but thanks Schofield for his efforts. Schofield asks for permission to write to their mother about Tom's heroics, to which Joseph agrees. Exhausted, Schofield sits under a nearby tree before looking at photographs of his wife and children. 1917 is not one of those stories with a tale that tells you how war is necessary and how heroes are produced during times like those. Rather, it is an effective outlet in retelling the experiences of those that had no choice but to participate in it. As soon as they fill those military roles, their lives are placed on hold, withdrew from civilization, from the arms of their family, from anything worth living without the guarantee of ever coming back, 